Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Becca, and I would like to welcome family, friends, and faculty to the Alexandria Technical and Community College Zoom graduation and painting ceremony. Graduating today are both the day and evening cohorts. When we started nursing school, sorry, we were all strangers, both excited and terrified, not knowing what we were getting into. Thank you, Kelly, Marilee, Yvette, and many others for helping us take the first steps into our nursing careers. I am a part of the evening cohort, and starting our first semester, we learned very quickly that our world was going to be turned upside down. From the hours of taking notes, studying for exams, guessing which orange is the most orange, trying to navigate COVID-19, missing a whole semester of in-person clinical, and learning how to answer, select all that apply. Out of all the things we have learned and endured, our instructor Kelly prepared us for these things by showing us the Screaming Grinch video as a coping technique. Thanks, Kelly. Our class has become a family. We even had a potluck before the pandemic hit. Those tacos were amazing. And one day, maybe we can finally have that pasta potluck. We became a community that helps and supports each other. I think that all started with the pizza guy walking into our classroom, making Alana blush to a shade redder than a tomato. Who thought that ordering pizza was a good idea during class? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, clinical two has been interesting this year. We all had to do late nights and crazy schedules to try and make it to this day. Thankfully, we had some amazing clinical instructors, Cinnamon, Kelly, and Jamie, to guide us through it all. We will for forever be grateful for the skills and lessons you have taught us. This has been a long journey, and for some of us, this is where you will stay, as LPNs. And for others, you will go on and continue your nursing education. Wherever you go, don't forget to breathe and remember your ABCs. Good luck. This semester, in one of our classes, we were asked about our why. This is about what made us choose nursing as a career. Um, nursing is not easy, but the good days always outshine the bad. The evening cohort has put together a brief video about our whys. Thank you guys for the last year. It has been amazing. Congratulations, day and evening cohorts. We did it. Here is our video, and thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> my why. My why. My why. My why. My why. My reason why. Why I chose nursing. My why. Uh, my why. My why for choosing nursing. So my why for why I chose nursing is because I really have a passion for helping people. And I feel like nursing allows me to make a positive impact every single day. And that is something that I really enjoy. My why is because I want to make a difference in people's lives. And every day is a new day and you're constantly learning new things. My why is because I love bringing smiles to my patient's face every time I work with them. And my aunt is an RN manager, and that's what made me want to go into this field in the first place. My why started with my grandparents. My grandfather told me that, Becca, you're going to become a nurse one day, and you're going to take care of me. I have a big heart and a big voice. I can't see anything more rewarding than that, to help them get through difficult times, to help them just feel better. My why of why I wanted to be a nurse. I never really knew I wanted to be a nurse until after my dad and my grandma both were in hospice. Um, I just saw the compassion and the caring from the nurses, and that was when I knew that's what I wanted to do. My sister's also a nurse. Um, and she has loved it 
and she told me I should be a nurse too. But it just was never the right time. And my grandma told me as I was trying to help take care of her at the Jay Weedham home that you need to be a nurse is what she told me. And actually even the nurses told me that it's what I should do. The reason why for why I chose to become a nurse, the main reason why I got into the program in the beginning was mostly because it was a stable job that was in high demand and would always be in high demand. Um, and a lot ha and a lot of that has to do with um, COVID in a way. I wanted to be someone that, who, or I wanted to be someone who was doing something that truly mattered in the lives of people. And I wanted to be someone who could be that person to step up and be that someone who someone else may need. I want to be a nurse so I can go on mission trips with my church and my husband and be able to do things over there. Help give immunizations and health care. After considering many other career opportunities, I feel a profound calling to the nursing profession. I look forward to a career where I can make a real difference in people's lives by ensuring that they get the best quality of care when they are the most vulnerable. Why I chose nursing as a career is because it is a job you can go to every day and go home knowing that you helped somebody or that you were a huge part of somebody's life. And it's always a career that you can build on and it has many opportunities and many different positions that you can pursue. When I was really little, my sister Morgan and I would always play pretend. She was always the boss and I was always the worker girl. One point in time, I must have gotten really upset and I yelled at her that I didn't want to be the stupid worker girl anymore. My little rebellion didn't last very long, but one thing I did learn from my sister and my parents was a lot of hard work and perseverance. That's why I really think nursing is my calling because it's a lot of hard work and service to the community. My why. My why is I really, really wanted to give more to my residents and family and learning more, educating myself more and becoming a nurse I feel I'd be able to give them more at a higher level, reward of giving and caring for another human being, whether it's someone you love or someone you don't even know, is a gift from God. And to me, it's just, it's beautiful. And I thank God every minute that he is giving me this opportunity. Growing up, I was always told by the adults in my life that I was gonna be some sort of caregiver in the healthcare field. And me being the defiant person I am and refusing to let anyone decide how I'm gonna live my life but myself, I decided that I wanted to be a social worker. So I went to school as a social worker for a couple of years and I absolutely hated every minute of it. I got my CNA certification, dropped out of social work, and decided that I was gonna work as a CNA in the healthcare field for a little while before officially deciding if healthcare was where I wanted to be. And I have loved every minute of it. I have never wavered from my want to be a nurse. It's, it's a constant battle, but it's also constant learning and growth and there's just there's something so rewarding about it that I I love uh, my why for becoming a nurse is I've always loved helping people and taking care of people um, when my grandma was sick with cancer, I went to a lot of her treatments and all of her nurses were great and they took a great job with taking care of her. And I saw that and I was like, you know, I, I wanna do that and I wanna help other patients and people's families like that. I want to be a nurse to positively impact other people's lives. It's a meaningful career and I think it'll give me a fulfilling life. I have a few relatives who are nurses, and that's what got me interested. 
Because when I was eight, my grandfather had passed away from a massive heart attack, but we were on a family drive, and I had the unique opportunity to watch my grandmother interact with the nurse after the doctor had pronounced um, my grandfather deceased. I had the unique opportunity to watch the gratitude from my grandmother to the nurse after she had talked to the doctor. And I knew in that moment that I wanted to be that for someone else. I wanted to help them in any way, shape, or form, whether that was comforting them or helping them in, yeah, just any way. Um, this picture here says a thousand words. My grandma just got done throwing a snowball at my mom at the window. We just got done bringing her back from the hospital. Um, Copeland Cancer Center. She has just learned recently that she had stage four um, breast cancer. And so we brought her home to take care of her in hospice. And um, that was tough, but we were able to do it. We were able to provide her with good care. And I just realized that that moment, I wanted to be a nurse. I wanted to help other people. Um, my grandma had such strength and was so courageous through it all. And the human spirit is stronger than anything that can happen to it. And I truly believe that. So this is my wife. And that's my motivation. My rock through the last year and a half. Happy graduation day, everyone. We made it. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Brad Anderson, and on behalf of the AM cohort, uh, we give a warm welcome to all present and for those who wish they could be with us today and are joining us online. Robert Schuler once said that tough times don't last, but tough teams do. And today marks not only the success of my classmates and I, but we celebrate the success of our communities, our community, our family and friends who have supported us through these trying times. We could not have done it without you. I believe this year, yes, 2020, through all its many difficulties and challenges, may be one of the most meaningful. Our greatest lesson among the many things that we've learned from pharmacology to fundamentals of nursing and clinical preparation and so, so much more, our greatest lesson is the importance of one, one uh, that we have towards one another. Our connection to one another is perhaps our greatest asset. We have and we will overcome. We appreciate our faculty and staff who have labored longer hours, sacrificed personal time, and rose to the occasion. Thank you. Among them is our next speaker, Michael Seymour, president of Alexandria Technical and Community College. Thank you for all that you've done this past year. Well, uh, my honor, you know, this, this beard used to be totally brown before the pandemic kicked in. But as president of Alexandria Technical and Community College, it is my pleasure uh, to welcome everybody who's uh, on Zoom watching to, uh, to our nursing pinning 2000, December 2020. This ceremony is symbolic of the educational success and the resilience of our students and reflects who we are as an institution. We are passionate about creating a culture of excellence, innovation, and learning that challenges and empowers students and employees to achieve their highest potential and their why. By successfully completing this very challenging nursing program, you have accomplished a significant personal and professional goal. This accomplishment has been amplified by successfully completing this rigorous program during a pandemic. You now have the education and training, as well as the proven perseverance to put what you have learned into practice. I want to be one of the first to congratulate each and every one of you who supported your graduate here today and for your um, selecting of Alexandria Community or Technical and Community College for your training. I also want to thank our nursing faculty and staff for their dedication to the teaching and learning process. Congratulations again, best wishes, 
And please stay in touch with the college. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Nicole Ed Hines. I did not prepare a speech. Instead, it just felt like an assignment to me, so I couldn't bring myself to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Rather, I'm just going to talk about my experience. I became a nursing assistant when I was 40. My arthritic knees still hate me for that. Today, I'm 42. <laughs> Thank you. I remember being in the hallway, the test out for nursing assistant, and watching all the people walk by that got to wear that uniform. <laughs> and eventually that day came where I said, when can I quit wearing this uniform? <laughs> but to sum it all up, the experience of coming to Alec Tech for the nursing program has been an honor. I am so proud to join a group of nurses amongst all of you in the room, evening cohort. We didn't get to know each other that well, but we're all here together today, right now, finishing. Some important words come to mind right now, like um, py pyloric stenosis. <laughs> <laughs> Diaphoresis. <laughs> We've learned so many words. <laughs> but those ones are in the front of my brain right now. <laughs> Our faculty couldn't have done better. You guys were handed COVID 25% into our program. None of us knew how to do this. <laughs> you guys didn't, but you pulled it off and helped us pull it off. I think I'm going to stay in LPN for a while. <laughs> <laughs> At least till COVID is over. And for me right now, that means loud proud nurse. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Kelly and I'm the PN Evening Cohort Instructor. Greetings and welcome to all of you who are in attendance either in person or via Zoom. You may have noticed that some graduates, I gotta adjust this, some graduates are wearing caps and some are not. I just wanna mention that all of these students have met the same requirements to graduate. One cohort decided to wear the caps and the other decided to forgo the option. It was just a matter of choice for each cohort, so it's great to mix things up. Okay, on with my speech. I did write a speech. <laughs> I can't go just off the cuff. So I have to be honest, I would have never thought in my lifetime I would be giving a speech for a nursing graduation over a Zoom webinar. Definitely a sign of the times, most certainly fitting for 2020 the year of the nurse. A big thank you to all family and friends for your support and encouragement through this most challenging but successful year. We are so truly grateful for you. To my resilient and determined nursing cohort, I have to be totally and completely honest, and I say this with a sincere heart. I am so glad we are here this is the finish line. I am confident that most of you have stressed about a test, a time or two, maybe have awakened in the middle of the night in a panic that you forgot to submit an assignment, spent a few moments in tears trying to explain what it's like to be in nursing school to a family member, a spouse, or a friend, or telling your little ones that you need just one more minute. Literally hundreds of hours studying, 
and consumption of undoubtedly several pounds of Dairy Queen and Cadoba preparing for this day. All of you know, you know who you are. For some of you, this is the start of your nursing education and journey into the nursing profession, a stepping stone. For others, this may seem like the end. This is hardly the end of your education journey. This is just the beginning. You are now part of one of the most trust trusted professions. With this position of trust comes a lot of responsibility. It's your responsibility to learn each day, learn from your patients, listen, observe. Be the presence of comfort and security for your patients. Sister Elizabeth Kenny, a nurse known for her tireless efforts in the treatment of polio, quoted, panic plays no part in the training of a nurse. I think this quote was created specifically for nursing students. One of the responsibilities of a nurse is to be the calm. There are going to be times where you will want to throw your hands up in the air and give up. Remember your why. Take a moment a big breath, gather yourself, gather your thoughts, and then go back out onto the floor and be the example. Our nursing st students have endured. That is what nurse nurses do, we endure. As Rosie Williams quoted, we do what nobody else will do in a way that nobody else can. In spite of all we go through, that's what it is to be a nurse. I found this quote to be quite appropriate, especially for nurses in 2020. In closing, I would like to offer a bit of advice from my experiences as a nurse. Remember your start, your foundation. Allow for humbling experiences. No task is ever beneath you. You were once a nursing student. Be gracious. Always show appreciation to your team. Be patient with yourself. You cannot learn everything in one day. Appreciate the opportunities to learn. Work with an experienced nurse, for their knowledge in the nursing profession is invaluable. Keep a poker face. You will be going through some stressful times. No matter what the circumstance or situation, your patients, their family, and your coworkers will look to you for guidance. Be the calm. Don't take it personally. As I tell my nursing students, you have to develop a turtle shell. Let things roll off. I think this is a necessity in order to be in the medical profession. Turn the page, sorry. <clears throat> Take a moment to listen to your patients, for those few moments will make all the difference in the world. Wear comfortable shoes. Graduates, if you haven't figured this out already from trying to keep up with your clinical instructors, nurses walk really, really fast. You need great shoes for this. Take time for yourself. Nurses tend to think about work even when we are not at work. It is absolutely essential that you find a balance. Take time to do what you love to do outside of work. And finally, be that nurse. The nurse that you looked up to, that set an example, that led you to your why. Congratulations, 2020 graduate nurses. Thank you. Um, I'm going to introduce Marilee Retzla, Dean of Nursing and Health. Thank you, Kelly. It is quite an accomplishment to complete nursing school in just in general, but during a pandemic, it is remarkable and noteworthy. And we just commend all of you for your hard work and your persistence and your courage to keep going. Congratulations. It is now my pleasure to present these nursing graduates as having met the program requirements set forth by the state of Minnesota colleges and universities and also the Minnesota Board of Nursing. 
The graduates are recognized today for their academic achievement by receiving their diplomas, and they'll be recognized for their induction into the nursing profession with our traditional pinning ceremony. Right now, Nicole Asmus is gonna come up and introduce our traditions. Thank you. I'm so proud of you all. Uh, the nursing pin. The tradition of the nursing pin and the ceremonial pinning originated in the 1860s at the Nightingale School of Nursing at St. Thomas Hospital in London. Florence Nightingale chose to acknowledge the graduate nurses by presenting each of them with a medal pin for excellence. In the United States, the first pin was presented to the graduating class of 1880 at the Bellevue Hospital of Nursing in New York City. It featured a crane in the center for vigilance, encircled with a band of blue for constancy, and an outer band of red for mercy and relief of suffering. We would like to continue this practice now by pinning our graduates. I would like to welcome Mandy Record and to present the Practical Nursing Day Program graduates and Sarah Hamelvig to place their pins. Bradley Anderson. Olivia Burns. <laughs> Nicole Ed Hines. Gabrielle Engstrom. <laughs> Hannah Finney. Carly Ford. <laughs> Sky Garen. <laughs> Kayla Geike. Sarah Googleberger. <laughs> Anna Jensen. Anthony Johnson. Lisa Lorenz. Kaya Martinson. <laughs> Sophie Lee. 
Stormy Merton. <laughs> Maria Nosbush. <laughs> Tetty Pay <laughs> Kelsey Plates. Gemma Pepping. <laughs> Emily Punsack. Kimberly Rasmussen. <laughs> Georgetta Sheriff. Melanie Sigler. <laughs> Abimbala Taiwo. Emily Winters. <laughs> the evening cohort will be pinned by Kelly Weisel and announced by Cinnamon Lancaster. Chloe Allers. <laughs> Tyler Armstrong. <laughs> Rachel Borden. Danielle Durand. <laughs> Emma Fox. <laughs> Jenna Gruber. Tanda Loudon. <laughs> Jenna Gruber. 
Mitch McKechnie. Ashley Rickert. <laughs> Alana Rodas. <laughs> Mary Swenson. Rebecca Taylor. <laughs> Eva Kentler. <laughs> Paige Tuttle. Kayla Walsh. Congratulations, everyone. And I'd like to introduce Tina Nessman, who will be leading us in the nursing pledge and the lamp lighting ceremony. When the nursing pinning ceremony was first initiated in the 1860s, the lamp was a symbol of the care and devotion that the nurse administers to the sick and injured in the practice of nursing. The lamp further represents Florence Nightingale's famous rounds at night and is symbolic of dedication. After the ceremonial pinning of students, Ms. Nightingale had her graduates recite a nursing pledge and light their lamps. We will carry on this nursing tradition by reciting the practical nursing pledge which is printed on the back of your brochure and then lighting of the lamps. I welcome Bradley Anderson and Kayla Geike to the podium to lead the pledge. Pledge myself here by God in the presence of this assembly practice my profession with integrity. I will endeavor to maintain and elevate the standard of nursing, both as a science and as an art. I wholeheartedly recognize the importance of high standards of care and of professional accountability. I devote myself to the healing, protection, and welfare of those committed to my care. I accept the duty to work for the improvement of health in the communities in which I live and I will hold with confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping and will respect the privacy of medical information. I will act with compassion in ethical matters. I will not knowingly administer or consume any harmful substance. I commit to interdisciplinary collaboration on lifelong learning. I fully acknowledge the seriousness of the responsibility that I accept to my calling on behalf of the faculty, we would like to recognize your accomplishments and welcome you into the nursing profession. Graduates, light your lamps. And now I invite Maria Nosbush for closing remarks.
was the night before graduation and all through the house. My brain was scurrying to procrastination I lost. No stockings were hung, but masks ready to wear. Next to masks were smelly shoes and Lysol filled the air. Don't touch that, I bleached it. I said, though no one asked. From day one until now, checking scores, praying for a pass. Though COVID changed plans, our family's watching from home. We finally made it to graduation. Just don't forget to foam. When we envisioned our graduation and pinning ceremony, this is definitely not what we had in mind. If anything, the year 2020 has taught us is to be adaptable. We could not have made it this far if not for the staff, our instructors, Yvette and Marilee, IT and the support staff for getting everything ready today, as well as my fellow classmates. Thank you does not even begin to cover how much appreciation we have for all of the hard work that has gone into this last year. From our clinical schedules, facilities, proper PPE, exposures, and a multitude of mental breakdowns from us students. We have always had so many people to rely on. We also want to let Kim know that we are all with you in spirit and we are thinking of you. I know I can speak for all of us when I say how lucky we are to have such great support systems from our parents, friends, spouses, significant others, kids, and classmates. The other day when I was studying really hard for finals, I came across the TikTok that showed a girl who was crying before she started her exam and then followed up with another video of her giggling because she aced it. I can 110% relate. My mom can also attest to this as she has received every single phone call before and after my exams, as well as my dad who has really excelled in his gift game in our group chats. According to Google, I'm supposed to fill this speech with inspiration. So after this year, it really opened my eyes. We are the inspiration. We've pushed through, we've persevered, we've set our goals, and we've accomplished them. Google also said that I should offer you advice. So I will leave you this before we go. For my mentor, Angie Gorgon, she always taught me from day one, if it is wet and it is not yours, do not touch it, put gloves on first. You cannot fix crazy, though you can document it. And lastly, be the nurse that you want to work with. In Deuteronomy 31.6, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified of them because the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Congratulations, class of 2020. We finally did it.